Okay. Um, so we went over, in our last lecture, we went over isotopes and the number of protons and electrons, the mass number. How with isotopes, uh, you have different numbers of neutrons, but everything else is the same. Now what we're going to do is uh, use electronic arrangement to explain periodic trends. So if you look, lithium, sodium, and potassium, what group are they in? Alkali metals. They're in that group because they all behave the same way. Alkali metals are notoriously reactive. Um, you throw sodium and water and it explodes. Um, you know, when you work with sodium, it immediately reacts with the air. So it's very reactive. But lithium, sodium, and potassium all behave the same. They're in the same group. That's why they're grouped together. Um, so let's look at how many protons each of these elements has. So how many protons does lithium have? Sodium, potassium. So look on your periodic table. You'll find that lithium has 3, sodium has 11, and potassium has <coughs> 19. So 3, 11, and 19. Um, we'll skip over the number of neutrons for now. The number of electrons, uh, how many electrons do they have? Same. 3, 11, 19. Now, I didn't give you enough information to predict how many neutrons they have. So I'm going to tell you what isotope we're dealing with. So this is lithium-7, sodium-23, potassium-39. So what I've given you is the mass numbers. Now with the mass number, can you determine how many neutrons there are? How do you do that? Excellent. So mass minus the electrons or protons. So how many neutrons do we have in lithium? Four. What about sodium? Twelve. Potassium? Twenty. Twenty. So looking at these subatomic particles for the alkali metals, it doesn't seem to be any relationship. Why would they be grouped together? They have a different number of uh, they have different numbers of protons, um, electrons, and neutrons. It turns out that it has to do with how the electrons are arranged within the atom. So if you go on to the next page, I'm going to explain how electrons can be parked. If you think of kind of the electron orbitals, where the electrons reside, kind of like a parking structure. So if you go into the first level and there aren't any spots, you go up to the second level. Then you go up to the third level, then you go up to the fourth level. <coughs> so the parking structure, the way it works, in shell one, the maximum number of electrons that you can have is two electrons. So you can only have two electrons parked in the first shell. In the second shell, you can have a max of eight electrons. Shell three, eight as well. Shell four, two. Now you might be thinking, I remember this from high school chemistry. I remember this from a chemistry class I took a while ago. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, all that. We don't get that deep in this course. It's, it, that's how it really is, but we just kind of go on the surface. Um, the electronic arrangements that we want you to predict, it has on this objective, the first 20 
elements. So that goes through um, calcium. So just hydrogen through calcium. There are electron arrangements for all the other atoms, or all the other elements on the periodic table, um, but we don't get into it in this course. So how do I go about parking these electrons? So if you look at the total number of electrons, hydrogen, how many electrons are there total? One. So where are you going to park that one electron? Shell one. It makes the most sense. That's where you drive in to the parking structure. You're not going to drive all the way up to shell four. So you're just going to park your one electron there. Now nitrogen. How many total electrons in nitrogen? Seven. So now we're going to have to work a little bit. So when you park these electrons, you need to make sure that the totals add up to, you know, the total number of electrons here. So it will be seven. So in shell one, you have two. Shell two, you would have five. So five plus two equals seven. Chlorine has 17 electrons. So we can park all of its electrons. So in shell one, how many will we park? Two. Shell two, eight. Shell three, seven. Good. So seven plus eight plus two gives you 17. <laughs> it's not anno as annoying as some <laughs> rings I hear. Very nice. I know. All right, calcium has um, 20 electrons. So I'm going to park 2 in shell 1, 8 in shell 2, 8 in shell 3, and then how many in shell 4? 2. So 2 plus 8 gives you 10, plus another 8 gives you 18, plus another 2 gives you 20. Now let's go back to the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, and potassium. So lithium has a total of so 3 electrons, sodium has 11 electrons, potassium has 19 electrons. How would you park the electrons for lithium? Two, one. What about sodium? Excellent. And then potassium? Two, eight, eight, one. Now, looking at lithium, sodium, and potassium, do you see a trend? Yes. Good. So the, what do you notice about the outer shell? They all have one. <coughs> so the outer shell has one electron. So this brings us to the periodic law. Properties repeat from one period to the next. So properties repeat from one period to the next. And remember that periods are which way? Up, down, or left? Horizontal. Horizontal. The other part of the periodic law, elements in the same group have the same number of outer electrons and behave in a similar fashion. So elements in the same group have the same
member of outer shell electrons and behave <coughs> similar fashion. Electrons can absorb energy. So they absorb energy, they go to a higher shell, they go to, up to that higher parking structure level, and then when they're no longer absorbing that energy, they give it off. And um, so when electrons fall from higher energy levels to lower energy levels, energy is given off, often in the form of light. So lab four, that atomic structure lab, you know where we did the Bunsen burner? and you saw different colors, that's because the electrons um, give off different amounts of energy. So, um, you know, potassium was that kind of purple, pink color. Barium was that green color. Good sodium was orange. Um, so that just corresponds to their electrons giving off energy. So the energy is um, given off in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Radiation can be characterized by frequency and wavelength. So you might have, remember, you might remember this from physics, um, from maybe a physical sciences course. So you have your frequency and wavelength. Um, what was that letter you put on the frequency? New. Oh, okay. It's kind of like a funny looking V. And then lambda. Um, so we talk about you have your energy. And remember that one wavelength is from here to here. You can do peak to peak or trough to trough. So this would be a wavelength. <coughs> the frequency is how many times the wavelength uh, goes through. So. Uh, You had something like this. You have a higher frequency. Higher frequency. Lower wavelength. This one, you have a or I should say, not just a lower wavelength, but shorter or smaller, shorter wavelength, smaller wavelength. Um, this one you have a longer wavelength. And what about your frequency? Is it higher or lower? Lower. So frequency and energy are directly proportional. So if you have a lower frequency, that means lower energy. So this one over here is higher energy. And if you think about this in terms of you and a friend are holding on to a rope and you're trying to shake it. If you shake it not so fast, it doesn't take as much energy. But if you shake it really fast, then it requires a lot of energy. So if you go to the next page,
Wavelength and frequency, how are they related? Are they directly related or are they inversely related? Inversely, very good. So a long wavelength means a lower frequency. A short wavelength means a what frequency? Higher. Good. How is frequency related to energy? Directly. So as energy increases, frequency increases. As energy decreases, frequency decreases. Any questions on that? On the next page, I have this electromagnetic spectrum. There's a lot of information on here. You do not have to memorize all of it. In fact, you just have to rem memor remember uh, how the different electromagnetic spectra are related to each other. So what I mean by that, when you look at this, you see that frequency, you have frequency in inverse seconds getting lower and lower over here. So going from right to left, what is happening to energy? So energy increases. So what I want you to know is the relative energy levels of gamma rays, x-rays, UV light, visible light, and infrared, radar and microwave, TV and FM, shortwave, standard broadcast, low frequency, low frequency radio. You do not need to know the wavelength, you don't need to know the frequency, you don't need to know how they're detected, just what has more energy a gamma ray, or a low-frequency radio. That's it. Um, so I've had students make up songs about this. I've had students kind of do the same thing with, that you did with the uh, prefix conversion ladder. Um, but there will be questions about this on you know, your exam. So just make sure you commit it to memory. This is one of those things that if you know it, write it down <coughs> on your exam when you first get it. Write it on that scratch paper. Write it somewhere so that you know it's there and you can just refer to it when you're asked about it. How did you learn? Did you know song? Um, you know, I, since I've been doing this for so long, I didn't really come up with anything. Sure. But I, I wish I would have learned what my students had, had used. I had one student um, a while back, and it was, she was a night student as well. And she had a three or four year old so she would always study and sing, and so they would make up all these crazy songs. And so I think, you know, that's, and then she would teach them to the class, and the class, oh yeah, I remember that song, so. But, um, yes. Mm-hmm, yeah, YouTube is a good resource for, for little study tips like this. There's a science-based YouTuber, a teaching-based YouTube, uh -huh. that has teaching videos, and there's definitely a lot of work on it. Yes. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's mm -hmm. purely like for teachers to find videos for their students. Right, right. Thank and you. Gates and Bill Gates. Bill Gates? I've heard of that. My husband, um, when he was in medical school, he thought that memorizing was cheating because he, you know, he always learns from the <coughs> foundation and then builds on that. 
And so when he took microbiology, uh, all of his classmates were saying, oh, you know, I remember this, this because I think of it as a frat house, and they drink Corona beer, and, you know, this is for, it was, that's just cheating. But it wasn't. It helped all the students remember it. So then he finally, okay, I've got to come up with these things, too, you know, so, but, you know. But um, I don't want you to be intimidated by all the information that's on this page. So don't worry about wavelength, frequency, all that stuff. Just the relative relationships of energy. Where would cell phones be? Uh, I think that would be somewhere between radar and microwave. I'll have to look that up. Um, Shortly. Mm -hmm. Look that up. That's a good question. Because we're all exposed to that. <laughs> and so right after, of course, visible light, that's where it starts getting dangerous for us. Mm -hmm. Right. You want to stay away from the gamma rays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how true it is, but there's this, I saw the same, it was on I know there are a lot of strange things. I have um, a friend who, you know, has young daughters. They have cell phones. And she has a basket when they walk through the house. Put your cell phones here because they're always in your pockets. And, yeah. Well, in the manual, they say that the cancer drugs that you're using, you know, in the phone manual, mm -hmm. they always say that. What was it? The attorney in the um, O.J. Simpson, Cochran, didn't he get uh, a brain tumor on the side where he always talked on the cell phone? Mm -hmm. well, was, I would just think there would be so much more of it now that it's possible. Years don't cross hemispheres, so you don't have any personal Mm -hmm. So, it depends on who you're talking to. There's no way to say it. It just seems to just go on one side. Right. Yeah, I didn't know. I remember when he died, that there was a lot of talk about that. Cause it, but, yeah, there's a, so much we don't know that we expose ourselves to. Really. Um, so, page 30 has questions that you can expect <coughs> to see. Uh, about the relationships between the energy levels. And so I want you to go ahead and try to complete these two and then the electron arrangements.